Dear friends of the Tom Photo channel, hello to all new viewers. Thanks for joining me. My today's question is how differently the Fuji's X Trans sensor behaves relative to the so called normal bare filter sensor. Fuji initially started out putting the standard bare filter sensors in their cameras. Then they developed their own X Trans sensor. I've used X Trans 2, 3, and 4. The x technology is different in that they position their color recording pixels not like a checkerboard, but using a more complicated pattern. I absolutely love what the x sensors can do. Some say that the x is more difficult to work with because less software tools know how to handle them. Fuji has its own X-Studio, and I've been using raw therapy. See the link below to very successfully work with the x images. I'm in a good position to compare x with its contemporary bare filter sensor because I currently own Fuji XA1 and Fuji XE2. Both have 16 megapixel APS-C sensor of the same size. The former has a bare filter sensor and the latter has x 2. Both are Fuji both are APS-C of the same size, both are 16 megapixel, and both are from the same era. So this should be a fairly clean experiment. I took the same pictures back to back with Fuji XA1 and XE2 using the same lens, Fujinon XF 18 to 55 mm and Provia film simulation with 200% dynamic range using the same exact settings with auto white balance. Let's see how much they differ and what is different. First up is a church. These images look like they were taken with the same camera. I have no reason at all to prefer one to the other. The yellow wildflowers also look the same. If I use some imagination, I see the XA1 a little cooler. However, this is so subtle that it makes Coke and Pepsi entirely different drinks. Maybe I'm seeing something because I'm supposed to see something. Let's see if perhaps these clouds show different amount of detail, but they don't. They're absolutely the same. Here's a late spring roadside with clouds. Call me blind, but these images are the same. Clouds over a field here. The XE2 looks more detailed if I use all of my imagination. However, maybe I'm seeing it because the X-Trans is supposed to be better. Maybe I'm seeing it because I failed to make the images exactly the same. Slightly different composition can easily fool your eye. Evening woods. I could not tell them apart. To my eye, they're like Pepsi and Coke again. Clouds over horizon. If I very carefully look at the center cloud, then maybe, just maybe, the XE2 shows a little more detail. Its overall image appears a little darker. I double checked the settings and the ISO, shutter speed and aperture all were identical. It can be white balance since this was not fixed. Is the camera making a different slash better white balance choices or is it just a one time thing? I've taken many more side by side images with these cameras and if one of uh, the images is darker it's almost always the XE2 image with the same settings. Clouds over horizon again. I'm unable to tell these images apart, no way. Tree and Horizon. Again the XE2 image is barely noticeably darker and this may cause the slightest improvement in the clouds. A lot of cloud images to compare I know, but this was purposely so because you usually see small differences best in the clouds and getting the clouds right is among the first things on landscape photographers mind. So which one do you prefer? The Barrett Pattern traditional sensor of XA1 or X-Trans CMOS 2 of XE2. When starting out I expected noticeable differences, but I'm not seeing them. I'm confused now. I always believed that the X-Trans 2 is very special. I know I've seen it perform amazingly. Now a sensor of different technology is indistinguishable from the X-Trans. I have two theories. First. Fuji is using the film simulation converter to force the outcomes to be identical. Second theory, there's something special about the 16 megapixel sensor and the wow factor people talk about comes from the pixel density more than anything else. 
We could also test other film simulations. The problem is that the XA1 just has five of them. Let's pick Velvia and revisit what we have looked at before. Velvia certainly makes images glow, but it makes them glow in a similar fashion whether or not they come from Fuji XA1 or XE2. At this point you probably ask, what about the RAW files? All kinds of hocus pocus can go into generating film simulations, but how different are the RAW files? The problem is that any software tool will handle these RAW files differently. When we apply the same settings, different things can happen under the hood. Some tools are less apt at X-Trans work than some others. We can, however, ask if both RAW files can be used to get the same results regardless of the settings. My answer to this general question is yes. I've not seen much that one RAW file can and the other one cannot do when handled with RAW therapy, my preferred RAW file editor. So choosing between these sensors is a harder task than I thought. I'm a bit inclined to prefer the x sensor, I guess because I like the name more, but it certainly does not leave the more traditional sensor in the dust. Miles from it. Fuji gets it right both ways. Thanks so much for spending some time with me. I'm looking forward to your comments down below. If you're willing to consider subscribing to my channel, that would be wonderful. I hope to see you again in my future and past videos. Have a great day.